Hey, what is up, everybody? This is your boy, AJ Tripp. And welcome to the Word According to Me. We have got a episode today where we're going to talk about certain people and why they have a platform that they do. Um, so let's um, let's go, let's go ahead and let's talk about it how men are this and men are that when you already know that you're a low value woman in men's eyes so yo first off fuck this dude and fuck any dude who says a woman is low value if for anything that she does right like really are you really gonna sit up here and say that a woman who does only fans is a low value woman i get the fuck out of here i'm so tired of these fucking men and they're not even men they're, 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 they're Neanderthals who just you know, sit up and they want to call women low value for doing something that is hurting nobody. Hurting nobody. Only OnlyFans is hurting anything like that. And if you watch the video, if you can stand to watch the rest of that video, because it's sickening that there are still men out here who think like this fucking idiot. I mean, really. Get the fuck out of here with that shit, man. Really get the fuck out of here, that shit. And you know what? I'm gonna say the same thing about women. When you talk about a high value man and a low value man, fuck you if you think that. Where the fuck did this shit come from? High value and low value. Everybody, like, when, when, when did this become a scene that you know you get a, like, like it's some type of value on who you are as a man or who value you as a woman? Like get the fuck out of here with this stuff, man. Really. Jesus Christ, this is so fucking sickening. This dude, as in, this is the type of dude that, you know, well, well, well hopefully, you no, know, I'm not making fun of the dead, but hopefully this dude is like Kevin Samuels. Kevin Samuels was alone, and he was talking all that trash on women. You know, you know I'm talking about their same thing, they're low value, and the reason why they're low value and things like that. Hopefully this is the same dude. Hopefully this dude is alone. Alone. Shouldn't have no woman. That's just, that's God awful trash and sick. Stop with your bullshit. Evolve, man. How about this? You want to talk about a low value man? A low value man is someone who does that, who talks down on women like that for doing OnlyFans or things like that. Get the fuck out of here. Okay, so that came from my TikTok page. You can go to TikTok.com slash A Triple 20. Or just go to the TikTok app and search A Triple Twenty, and you can find my, that TikTok there on my page. And this is what we want to talk about today. We want to talk about idiots like these who have these platforms to talk that shit and speak it to other men and make them Neanderthals as well. And and it's working. It worked for Kevin Samuels, who I mentioned in their TikTok. It is working for um, Dr. and uh, not Dr. And you call him Dr. It is working for Andrew Tate as well. It is also working for Dr. Umar Johnson on another level. Not necessarily about low value and high value people, but it's a, it's a virtual array thing. And it, it is, it's become sickening. And we'll get to uh, that dude at the end of the. At the, at the end of the podcast, but what I want to talk about here is just the ridiculousness of these people in the platforms and why they should not be given platforms. You know, I have been a proponent of freedom of speech for a long time. Listen to the Howard Stern show for a lot of years, uh, and I was, you know, for six or seven, eight years until he went to, um, Serious radio, and I have been so, uh, so a staunch proponent of it, and I, I still am. But I, I have to admit, over the last three years, and it's got a little bit to do with our, you know, ex president, forty five. Um, well, I, I've kind of come to the point to where, yeah, freedom of speech is still there, right? But some of it needs to be, you know taken away. <laughs> Some of it needs to be restricted. Some of it needs to be just down and outright outlawed. 
And this is one of the things I think that happens. You know, yes, they, they have the ability to speak all this god awful trash that they want to. But, you know, and we have the right to not listen to it. We can turn off and, you know, not watch it and not listen to it or anything like that, right? But I also think that some of it is just, we just need to just, like, you know, get rid of it. And they've done that with Andrew Tate. He is a couple, a couple of weeks ago, and this was in this was the the um, the the start of one of the reasons why I wanted to do this type of podcast was because you know he had been banned of like of, of like Facebook and Instagram and YouTube and Twitter and things like this because of his misogynistic and violent things that he said about women. And about how men should treat women. And there's a part of me that wonder, wonders, like, do like, do these people even believe the things that they speak? Are they just doing this to try to catch, you know, men and people down at at a, at a level where, yeah, yeah, you know, where they, you know, where they're depressed or something like that, and they, and, and they try to find something to get them out of their doldrums and then they come across these idiots and and then they say yeah oh well yes you know what he's got a point I need to be this way and I need to be that way you know this is gonna help me out I'm gonna be a, a quote unquote high value man no the fuck you're not stop it and it, it is just it, it's absolutely sickening to, to, to hear this and to hear these things that, that they say. And like with this dude, you know, it, 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 that I just played from our TikTok. Like, I just, oh my God, it, it was, it sickens me. And like, I, I, I see it and, and I hate it. And I hate it because we're not supposed to be putting people on two different levels like that. You know, because because once you say that something you are low value, something is high value, you're putting people on levels, and that's not what it, that's not how you're supposed to do it, right? Now, listen, you can you can be not okay with dating a woman who does OnlyFans, which was that that was that. That TikTok was about, right? You may not feel comfortable with it, right? You may not think that it's, you know, you know, something that a woman should do or anything like that. You can have those type of thoughts, right? And I, and I, and I, and I, I wish you wouldn't, but I guess you can have them, and, and I guess you can be okay with it. But as long as you understand that they are. That they are no different than a woman who who is a teacher, no different than a woman who is a lawyer, no woman, no different than a teacher that is a doctor, no different than a te- than a woman who is doing you know garbage work, you know construction work or anything like that. That they are that they are on the same plane as them, and that they deserve the exact same thing those women do. Love, respect, excuse me, love, respect, you know, and every other thing that you you would give to one of those women in those other fields. They deserve the exact same thing. And just because that they do OnlyFans, or just because that they strip, or just because of that they do um, porn, or what other thing that, you know, goes along with sex work. Right, they deserve the exact same thing as the women who aren't doing sex work. That's a fact, and that's the truth. And the fact that this motherfucker over here was just screaming like he was out of his goddamn mind about it, it suddenly pissed me off. It pissed me off, and I I, I can't stand that. This is judgment. And it happens on the other way around too. It happens. It happens on the way around for women. Now, I I could not find a woman. I was searching. I cannot find a woman who was like 
who I, I it was like who's doing the same thing as, as Kevin Samuel or was doing the same thing as Andrew Tate. I couldn't find a, a female version of of them. You know who who would be talking who talking talking down on men men saying that they're low value because. They they were something like that. They didn't maybe they didn't they don't have a car or they they still live with their mothers or whatever that way. But I, but I think one way women do it is using the term big dick energy. Now they now they try to get you. They try to get you right. They say well no you you don't have to have a big dick to have big dick energy, but it, it's it's not called. You no, know, you know this. This you know, but the, the energy is supposed to be. It is supposed to be like a a way of life of doing something that is, you know, right or some or, or wrong. Like someone would say, um, for instance, if you if you've never heard of the term or the phrase or how it would be used, like someone would say, you know, it, it, we even talk about you can say sports, right? We can maybe say that. You know, someone who's scored four touchdowns has big dick energy, right? Or someone who gets fifty-five points in a game in a basketball game, big dick energy. Or yeah, maybe on a on a, on a level of um, of of uh, um, of not sport, right? I I I speak of TikTok. I saw a TikTok where apparently I I didn't I I didn't get it. I didn't understand what. But the said first, first I had to go through the comments to figure out what he was doing. But apparently this lady, she was, you know, working out and the man walked up to her and kind of let her know that she was getting ready to start her period. And I guess, and I guess she was thankful for that. And some people might say, well, that guy had big, big energy, right? But the thing is about this phrase is that you're saying that the that that having a big dick is a good thing, right? Now again, this is this is your preference. What you whatever you like, whether you whether you want one or you, whether you want a big dick or you want or you don't want one, or whether you you know you think size matters or it doesn't matter. But you're already saying, but just by using the term of big dick energy, you're already saying that if you have a big dick, then you are better. Then you, then you don't have a small dick. That's that's that's, that's exactly what that means. The phrase means. And it, so it's going the way the same thing. You're saying that a person with a big dick is better than someone with a small dick. You just you're just saying that. That's what that's the way women go about it. Um. And and I say and I, I say this too. If there are women out there. Who are doing the same thing that Kevin Samuels has done, and the same thing that Andrew Tate has done, and even the same thing that Dr. Umar is doing when it comes to race. Get them the fuck off of these platforms, off of social media. They don't belong there. They really don't. So, um, so I got a couple of of articles here just to prove my point. Just in case if you have been lucky enough to not know what these people are and who these people are and what they talk about. I've got a couple articles to, to speak on this. Um, and we're going to start with Kevin Samuels, who is, who is um, like I mentioned in my TikTok, who has passed away, passed away over four or five months ago, I believe. So, but um, we're going to start with him. Okay, so I have an article here from SwagHerOnline.com. These are the 10 absurd things that Kevin Samuels has said about women or to women. So let's start here. This is by Chandra Gore from um, May 9th of this year. Kevin Samuels has had a lot to say during his time on this earth. May he rest in peace. In memory of his passing, I have compiled a list of 10 absurd things he has said about women or to women. His passing does not negate the deeds of legacy of degrading and disrespecting under the guise of so-called uncomfortable truths. Below are 10 of Samuel's most absurd quotes that were often directed at black women or all women. Read with caution, and we will. Uh, these aren't numbered or, but these are, again, like, these are just things that he said. 
If you have made it to 35 and you are unmarried, you are a leftover woman, said Samuels in a YouTube video of his. You are as what left. Men know that there is likely something wrong with you, whether you want to hear it or not. I am going to go there with you. I'm telling you what the truth that you don't want to hear. Men know that there are likely some, that there is likely something wrong with you, that you cannot be an adjustable six or higher. Something is wrong with you. That's where men automatically come with it. And here's the thing. When you were between the ages of 22 and 25 and you didn't want to settle, you were trying to get the CEO, the pilot, the investment banker. You were trying to get flued out. This is one. Two. Ladies, understand when a man asks you out on a date, he's asking to have sex. If you don't want to have sex with him, do not go out on a date with him. Three, if a woman decides to go on a date with any man after the hours of 5 p.m., intimacy should be on the menu. However, if the intention of the woman is to keep the relationship with the man strictly platonic, the time frame of noon to 3 p.m. is much more suitable. See what I'm talking about with this motherfucker? Four. Oh, actually, no. Wait, wait, wait. Okay. Well, yeah, I guess so. I guess four. In reference to a, to a mother asking, what would you do if your child said they were sexually assaulted by their father or stepfather? His response was, why would you not question your child? Why would you blow up a marriage? Why would you just believe her? Children lie. Girl, whatever. That's your daddy. This that one I'm gonna say is is a bit different. I don't know how sir that is. But that, that's that's such a that's such a hard one because that it, it's your child. But father, but. But by the father or the step the stepfather more because that your child may not like your your stepfather and may lie to get rid of. Him. I don't know if he would lie about your father. That's a tough one. But I think at the end of the day, you probably should believe you should, should, should try to find a way to make sure that that they were. Telling the truth, but, but that I don't, I don't know. But okay, so we'll move on. Number five: Women like you die alone, straight up, because you think you're better than the men that you qualify for. And the only reason, Alex, look, look at the language you're using. You qualify for what? And the reason, honestly, ma'am, that I can see a woman like yourself really thinking you deserve more is because you earn more money than most people around you in North Carolina. This is this fucking phrase again. High-value men don't care about your money, not the kind of men you want. We don't care about your money. It ain't ours. We care about the fact that you're older and you've got kids and your average in looks. He said that to somebody. Oof. Kevin Samuels needed to be stopped. And life stopped him. Six. I don't know what you're talking about that a man shouldn't cheat or whatever. When you broke the first rule that men want women who are fit at five feet eight and 280, 220 pounds, you weigh more than a man at her height. At her height. True or false? You're about the size that Emma Smith and Barry Sanders were. You're a running back size. I need you to get fit. Feminine, friendly, cooperative, and submissive in order to find a man. The seven is seven. Typically, women like you try to get something outside of their range, knowing it's outside of their range. Knowing that you don't know these kind of men. You don't know where these guys do. You don't know what they want. Yeah, you're fixated on having them because you feel like you should have them because you're socially at an economic status. Not a good chance you're going to find that person. If you don't, you end up dying without one, meaning die alone. Again, very ironic that he said that to a woman and he died alone. Another one. 
Women for the last 30, 40 years have been told you can have it all whenever you want, no matter how you are. And they've been given an unrealistic expectation of the actual sexual marketplace value. Regarding dating standards, women by nature want to consider consolidate on the highest value man possible. Social media and dating apps have it now where you you have almost 100% of women wanting men in the top 20 and to top 10 and 20 percent to produce this outcome which is unrealistic you want a man making at least six figures that's only 10 percent 14 percent of the population in regards to women and the wage gap Samuels had a mouthful to say see the question is not are women important it's relatively contribution if you take the wage gap the way it's calculated women's hours worked men's hours work divided by the number and it comes up to a number of course, there's a wage gap, but it, but what it doesn't account for is multivariate anal analysis. We have these conversations about gender, and it tends to be unvaried. One way we don't take into consideration that just like women want higher representation at the at the upper levels of corporations, she didn't have a higher representation at the lower levels. You to you need to be digging ditches. You need to be collecting trash. They only want representation at the higher end. Yes, there are women who are valuable in corporations, but 6% of women in this country are earning $100,000. 6% in STEM, science, engineering, technology, and math. And it is known that its colleges and universities are struggling to get more women into these programs. So while, yes, after companies are built, can women come in? Yes. But who's taking the risk building these organizations? And overwhelmingly, it's men. He had, okay, so that, that was that was, that was I guess that was number ten. So they they she uh, she answers saying he has created a tribe of men, quote a uh, tribe of quote men unquote that are out here thinking that his way is right and are mistreating women. These are the same dudes who carry their entire life in one hefty tote. And have to call their mothers for their birth certificate and social security card. That part. You see, um, he and he's and, and she said ten, but there's been much, much more, much, much more. And the men have started to believe. It. He, yeah, he had a, an absolute follow follow up because you know the thing about men is, is that we want to feel like men. Right, we want to feel like men, and sometimes we don't. You know, we don't know necessarily how to evolve. You know, in our, in our way of our feelings and thinking, and we we think one way. So when someone comes around like Cameron Samuels, and says, "Hey, all of these things, you know, and high value men and things like that," we go, "Yeah, yeah." I'm a, I'm a high value man. I should want a high value woman. No, you're not a high value man. You're you listen to Kevin Samuels. You are low value, at the lowest of values. You're with him. The shit that he has said to women, you know, to their faces, and to about and about women, is absolutely disgusting. And I, I kind of hem and hawed over the, the um, you know, the, the, the comment about the, um, you know, you know, the mother or, you know, the mother having her, having her child, you know, claimed that she was sexually assaulted by her father or stepfather. I kind of hemmed and hawed over that one, you know, just because of, you know, everything, you know, the way, especially when it comes to the stepfather, how a child could lie about it. But the biggest thing, the biggest thing about that is not necessarily what he, you know, what he said. But that's from his the thing that he has said. That what that's supposed to be is that again, the the the, the husband is supposed to mean more to her than anything in the world. Than her child, than herself, than her family. 
That, that's what that's supposed to mean. That the husband comes first. That's that's why he that's it, 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 his saying isn't from a a, a a opinion of like, well the stepfather. Well, you know, but she, you know, where exactly is this about? You know, does the step is, is she does she really like the stepfather? Is she really like? You know, is she trying to get something to, you know. You know, is, is she, what, what, you know, is, I think was, is there, are they trying to do something to break up the marriage or something like that? He's not going about that. What he's saying, he's, he's coming from the point of this is a person who, you know, because he is a man, because he is the man, you sh should be all about him and what he says goes. That's where that comes from. And that's something that should not be coming from. So. Sandra Gore was a, uh, you know, she said, you know, in her article, may he rest in peace. I am going not going to be that kind. I just, let's just say, let's just now move on to Andrew Tate. All right, so this is an article from the Guardian. Uh, inside the violent misogynistic world of TikTok's new star, Andrew Tate. Uh, written by Shanti Das, Saturday, August 6th, 2022. And this one, uh, this one, he's, he's worse than Kenneth Samuels. So let's read this. Observer investigation reveals how the ex kicks boxer and Brick Brother contestant from Luton has gone from obscurity to global internet fame in months. Andrew Tate says women belong in a home, can't drive, and are a man's property. He also thinks rape victims must bear responsibility for their attacks. And he dates women's day and he dates women aged 18 and 19 because he can make an imprint on them, according to videos posted online. In other clips, the British American kickboxer who poses with fast cars, guns, and portrays himself as a cigar smoking playboy, talks about hitting and choking women, trashing their belongings, and stopping them from going out. Quote, it's bang out the machete, boom her in the face, and grip her by the neck. Shut up, bitch. Unquote, he says in one video, acting out how he attacked women if she accused him of cheating. In another, he describes throwing a woman's things out of the window. In a third, he calls an ex-girlfriend who accused him of hitting her, an, alleg an allegation he denies, a dumb hoe. Tate's views has been described as extreme misogyny by domestic abuse charities capable of radicalizing men and boys to commit harm offline. But the 35-year-old is not a friend's personality lurking in an obscure corner of the dark web. Instead, he is one of the most famous figures on TikTok, where videos of him have been watched 11 Point six billion times. Styled as a self-help guru, offering his most mostly male fans a reset re re recipe for making money, pulling girls, and escaping the matrix, Tate has gone in a matter of months from near obscurity to one of the most talked about people in the world. In July, there were more Google searches for his name than for Donald Trump or Kim Kardashian. His rapid search to fame was not by chance. Evidence by, obtained by the Observer shows that followers of Tate are being told to flood social media with videos of him, choosing the most controversial clips in order to achieve maximum views and engagement. The coordinated effort involving thousands of members of Tate's private online academy, Hustlers University, and a network of copycat accounts on TikTok has been described by experts as a blatant attempt to manipulate the algorithm and artificially boost his content. In less than three months, the strategy has earned him a huge following online that potentially made him millions of pounds, with 127,000 members now paying the 39 pounds, I guess, a month to join Hustlers University community, many of them men and boys from the UK and US. Yet, despite much of the content appearing to break TikTok's rules, which especially bland ban misogyny and copycat accounts. The platform appears to have done little to limit Tate's spread or ban 
the accounts responsible. Instead, it has propelled him to the mainstream, allowing clips of him to proliferate and actively promote them to young users. I, I, you know, I, I, I saw those videos, you know, and I, I really didn't think nothing of it at first because I, to be honest with you, if it's not what I'm looking for, which is more, more often than not, cat videos, <laughs> sports, or something like that, I don't, you know, I, I, I just, I swipe, I just continue to swipe, um, and it's, and it's the same thing. Like I've seen some of the things on YouTube as well. I remember, like when I would see it on YouTube, I, there would be like videos of him and things like that. So I, 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 I didn't know it just until like recently how you know when he started becoming, you know, his name started really getting bigger. Like about a month ago, well, probably around the time this this uh, this article was written. Raised on an this goes back to the article. Raised on an estate in Luton, the son of a catering assistant and chess master, Tate has been long making headlines for stern controversy. So, through his 20s, he worked as a TV producer while training as a kickboxer at the local gym, going on to fight professionally and win world titles. In 2016, his public facing career appeared to be over when he had, had it barely begun. When after being cast in Big Brother, he was ejected from the house over a video of him hitting a woman with a belt. A second video emerged shortly after in which he was shown telling a woman to count the bruises he apparently caused to her. Both Tate and the woman and the women denied any abuse occurred and said the clips showed consensual sex. More controversy followed. Posts containing homophobic and racial slurs were found on his Twitter page. Then in 2017, he was criticized by mental health charities for saying depression isn't real. The next month, he waded in on Me Too saying women should bear some responsibility for being raped, a view he has since repeated, and which, among other incidents, led him to being barred from Twitter. The backlash won Tate work and boosted his profile. He appeared on InfoWars, the podcast of conspiracy theorist Alex Jones, and was pictured with far-right YouTuber Paul Joseph Watson and met Donald Trump Jr. at Trump Tower, posting on Facebook afterwards the Tate family support Trump fully. MAGA. If you have any other reason to hate the son of a bitch. In the UK, meanwhile, he mingled with arch Brexiter. Nigel Farage, I hope that's his name, Facebook photos shown and show and spoke of ties with the anti-Islam activist Stephen Yaxley Lennon, known as Tommy Robinson. Tate describes Yaxley Lennon in the podcast as a solid guy with a good heart, whom he has hung out and with untold time. In 2019, the police were called after Tate showed up at the house of Mike Stookberry, a journalist who had been critical about him online, days after the Yaxi Lennon did the same thing. The incident caused Stookberry's wife to suffer a panic attack and played the role of them played and played a role in them leaving the UK for Germany. Long before his rise to TikTok fan, Tate's views on women were also becoming clearer. On Facebook in 2018, he bemoaned the decline of Western civilizations. Let me say that again. He bemoaned the decline of Western civilization after seeing a poster at Heathrow Airport encouraging girls to go on holiday as opposed to encouraging being a loving mother and a loyal wife. He also openly discussed being accused of violence against several women, although he is not understood to have ultimately been charged with any offenses apart from a driving offense in 2018. In one interview, Tate describes an incident where a woman knocked a phone out of his hand in a club and a man punched him, so they started wrestling. And the tussle, he accidentally hit the woman and broke her jaw, he says. In another video, he has been investigated by police for allegedly abusing a woman, which he denied, in a case where he had his house raided, devices confiscated, and was held in a cell for two days. Around the time the UK police were investigating abuse allegations, Tate is understood to have left the UK for Romania. In one video explaining his reasons for the move, he suggested it was because it would be easier to evade rape charges. This is, quote, probably 40% of the reason, unquote, he moved there, he says in one video, adding, 
Quote, I'm not a rapist, but I like the idea of being able to do what I want. I like being free. Unquote. That is awful. God awful. Yet more allegations would follow. In January, the Daily Mirror reported that Tate and his brother Tristan were, quote, raking in the millions from webcam sites where men hand over a fortune as they fall for models' fake stop stories, unquote. Something they themselves described as a total scam. Then in April, the brothers' mansion was raided by police following a tip-off from the U.S. Embassy that a 21-year-old American woman was being held against her will. The Tates were taken in for questioning before being released denying wrongdoing. The Romanian authorities said last week that the investigation later expanded to cover human trafficking and rape allegations was ongoing. Amid the drama offline on online, Tate's content took off. Since January, repackaged videos from interviews with Tate over the years has been attracting millions of views on TikTok. But in recent weeks, this growth has been accelerated. In August, so far alone, clips tagged with his name have been watched more than a billion times. These posts do not come from Tate himself, who does not appear to be active on the platform, but from hundreds of accounts, often using his name and photo, run by his followers, members of the Hustlers University. Members, including boys as young as 13, are told they can earn, earn up to 10 pounds, 10,000 pounds a month through lessons on crypto investing. Well, now you know he's a scam. If they in crypto. Drop shipping and by recruiting others to Hustler University, earning 48% commission for each person they refer. To have the best chance of getting people to sign up, they are advertised to stoke controversy to improve their chances of going viral. In one guide, Hustler University students are told that they are attracting comments and controversy is the key to a success. What you ideally want is a mix of 60 to 70 percent fans and 40 to 30 percent haters. You want arguments, you want a war. No, I, no you don't. As someone who is trying to become like a content creator, you know, a YouTube channel with a TikTok account, with a, a Twitch channel, with, with, with a sports podcast, with this podcast, no, I, I, I don't want arguments. I don't want war. I want a healthy discussion if we disagree on something, you know, but you know where we listen to each other's points. But I, I do not want a war. Nobody should want war when it comes to uh, God. Many of Tate's videos appear at first glance to be harmless, even funny. In his trademark straight-talking style, he derides men who drink tap water instead of sparkling water and people who own cats. Well, now I fucking really hate him. <laughs> Quote, real men have dogs, unquote, he says. Other material is presented under a banner of male self-improvement, just like Kevin Samuels and all of these people. It's just sickening. But much of it appears to meet the definition of hateful content set out in TikTok's community guidelines, which state that TikTok is inclusive and supportive and bans content that praises and promotes, glorifies, and, or supports hateful ideology, including misogyny. TikTok's terms also explicitly say they ban accounts that impersonate someone by using their name or a picture in a misleading manner. Last week, however, content being promoted to users on the platform appeared to be in flagrant breaches of the rules. We conducted an anonymous experiment with a blank account set up for a teenage boy who and and were quickly shown content of tape. After watching two of his videos, we were recommended more, including clips of him expressing misogynistic views. The next time the account was opened, the first four posts of were taped from four different accounts. In one video posted from an account with Tate's name and face, he describes factly how he expects his girlfriends to behave. Quote, I inflict, I expect, absolute loyalty from my woman, unquote, he says. Quote, I ain't having my chicks talk to other dudes like any other dudes. My chicks don't go to the club without me, they are at home, unquote. For Tate's fans, his, the findings would come as little surprise. Much of his history is not hidden, but has been openly discussed in podcasts, and his supporters say his straight-talking style is an antidote to so-called cancel culture. Critics say his, his rise raises concerns about online misogyny and potential radical, radicalization, with one woman online labeling him the scariest man on the Internet. 
Another seeking advice on a forum described how her boyfriend's attitude and opinions had changed dramatically after watching videos of tape. Andrea Simon, director of End Violence Against Women Coalition, said many of Tate's videos appear to clearly violate TikTok's terms and said that by taking no action, the platform is facilitating and ultimately profited, profiting from the potential radicalization of, these, of, young, of its young male users. The NSPCC's Hannah Ruchin, a policy offer, added, Viewing such material at a young age can shape a child's experiences and attitude, resulting in a further harm to women and girls in and out of school and online. Tate's rise shows how TikTok's algorithm is open to manipulation by bad actors, says Callum Hood, head of research at the Center of Countering Digital Hate. The dangerous thing that is very eye-catching uh, content and the TikTok algorithm in particular is so aggressive that you only need to pause for a few moments before it will begin to, rec to recommend similar content to you again and again. He added, it's up to TikTok to be on the lookout for harmful current content and manipulation of its platform. It begs the question, why haven't they noticed this and why have they failed to act? In a comment this weekend, TikTok said it took misogynistic seriously and was actively investigating whether accounts posting content of Tate were breaching its rules. A, post, a spokesperson said misogyny and other hateful ideologies and behaviors are not tolerated on TikTok and we are working to review this content and take action against violations of our guidelines. We continually look to strengthen our policies and enforcement strategies, including adding more safeguards to our recommendation system. It did not comment on the claims of platform manipulation, but said its users can click not interested on videos and they dislike to hide future material from that particular account. Tate, whose content remains rise spread on the platform this weekend, did not respond for his for did not respond to requests for comment. And like I said, this was uh, August six, I believe. Again, I'm going to say uh, when when this um, lady wrote this uh, wrote this article, I believe late August, very early in September, uh, he was banned off of YouTube and, and TikTok and Instagram and something like that because of all of these ridiculous theories and ridiculous notions you talked about here and we talked about in TikTok and I played you at the beginning. Um, you know, uh, my TikTok, which was responding to another Andrew Tate wannabe, you know, on TikTok, trying to be like this. And let me tell you something. Uh, so this, whoever runs the account, whether it was the dude or whether it was someone else, whoever, right? I, I do my stitch, and uh, they comment, good, to, you know, you know, thanks for reviewing our content, or something like that, whatever they said, right? Um... Let me go very quickly and just read what it says here. Um, right, the comment. Um, we appreciate your stitch. 100% you know, the, uh, the 100 emoji and the heart emoji. They, they commented that. Uh, it's from the I Chill Pod you know, or whatever, right? So they they uh, they they wrote that, but I but then was with that being the only view that was the only view that that, that, that I had on that. They um, I also got a a comment. I also got a thing from TikTok saying that they were going to. Um, remove my video for bullying, you know, something like that. And I said, so that so that that, that motherfucker, he, he liked it and then commented on it, but then had it, but but, but then but then had it to try to get it removed from bullying. So I, I appealed, and wouldn't you know it, it it, it came back saying, nope. It was not bullying, and he restored my video. So peep that, you dumb motherfucker. Because 
All I was doing was just doing what I'm doing now. Calling out the bullshit that these people are saying. And saying, yes, all this shit that they are saying is garbage. The article that I just read to you, just some absolute horrible things that this dude has said. And if those things are true about the allegations of all of the, all of the, you know, violence that he's had towards women, if that is true. God, that is just, that's awful. Awful. Andrew Tate is not a, is not a absolute, he, he is not a good person. He is not someone who is trying to you know, help male self-improvement. He is not someone who is trying to, you know, give men confidence or anything like that. No. He's, first of all, one, trying to take their money. And two, he is trying to I don't know what the fuck he's trying to do. But it, it, it ain't trying to help male self-improvement. That's for damn sure. Andrew Tate needs to be stopped. And they and they have stopped him. But it's going to continue on. And the evolved men, and I consider myself to be an evolved man, the evolved men must continue to fight back against the stuff that Kevin Samuels and Andrew Tate and this dude on <laughs> dude on TikTok speak. Anytime you hear it, you know, you respond to it. So that the young the young kids out there do not think that this is the way that you should act and live your life. Next is Dr. Umar. So now let's Come to the perhaps the worst one here. The Dr. Umar Johnson it says here on his Twitter account, he's a certified school school psychologist. God, he works with people in the children in schools also. Oh boy, he is a motivational speaker. He is Pan Africanist. Doctor of Clinical Psychology, NIBPA, FDMG, IMIAPAP President, Mr. Unapologetically African. But he spells and he spells African with a K. I don't know what the fuck that means, but whatever. So this is something from Twitter. If if you if you're a sports fan, if you're not a sports fan, um if you heard, if, if you've not heard about the the um, the um, story with Ime Udoka, who has been suspended by the Boston Celtics, he's the head coach of the Boston Celtics basketball team. He's been suspended by them for a year for an improper relationship with a woman. Now it has been alleged um, who this woman is. There's been some people. On Twitter, I'm not gonna say her name or say who she is, but it is um, but it's but uh, it's been it's been um, cited as maybe this is the woman that he had the improper relationship with, um, and this woman is white. So uh, Dr. Umar put this on his Twitter. White female predators is at it again. How can you lynch the brother and protect the snow bunny? Was she a victim here? Isn't this the same old slave plantation narrative of the innocent slave master's wife being molested by the sexually uncontrollable black monster? When the truth of the matter is that she is just as culpable as he is. In fact, I am of the opinion that the husband used his wife to destroy the self-confident first-year up-and-coming black coach. The snowbody has always been used to do the bidding of the white power structure's never-ending war against African alpha males, and that's, that's another word. If you use alpha male, you are a fucking cunt. Everyone knows just how racist the Celtics organization was and is. Additionally, Brad Stevens was jealous Udoka did in one year what he couldn't do in several. Udoka was wrong 
for cheating on his wife and at all. And I don't think he was white. I don't think him and Nia Long were married. Maybe it was. I'm not sure. That's not the that's not the thing here. Let's continue. And definitely not with a snow bunny. Nevertheless, this was an inside job for an analyst coming when I returned from Europe. So th and, and this is what he does. He preaches that, you know, white people are the devil and that white people are, you know, are are, are only here to ruin black people and to do this and that women, white women are here to just drive black men crazy and, and do things that they, you know, you know, don't want to do, like cheat on a black woman and things like that. And he doesn't believe in interracial marriages. He doesn't think that, you know, black people should be with white women. And he does and he he, he he is the definition of a fucking racist. And again, he has a platform to dispute this. He's on Twitter. He's on Twitter. I should. I'm gonna report this tweet right now, and I, and I think about it. Need to get him. Get this motherfucker off this. This. I have already have him blocked, but I'm gonna report the tweet. I need to get him off the Twitter. He, 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 he's got a website. I'm not gonna get the website. I was gonna read really to but his website that probably he probably has a YouTube channel, and he always needs to get off this this this, this thing because it is. It is a sickening. It is god awful. And and, and well, wow, in the stuff we just read, we got Kevin Seminoles degrading and demeaning women. And we have Andrew Tate who's also doing that, but he's also almost in a way very and very much not in a way. He is very much saying that it is okay to, you know, be violent against women with some of his language. And, then, and, 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 and and like I said before, I think this could still be the most, you know, you know, thing because he's pre preaching pure hate. As a black person, you should hate white people for what, you know, and 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 everything like that. And he says this, and there's been so many videos. He's his stuff has been spread on TikTok as well, and it's all bullshit. And and, and, and what I hate becoming, uh, what I hate is that he's becoming me. And I don't think he he hasn't become a meme in a way to, you know, degrade and and and, and demean him. He become a meme as when something when there is a beautiful white woman, right, like on Twitter, you know, on Twitter something like that, and you know, or something like that. There's some idiot black dude who's posts a gif of Dr. Umar sliding in to, to, to focus or posting a, a gif of, 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 of Dr. Umar posting a still picture of him as if to say, you know, you know, hey, you know, d don't, no, you know, black, black men don't look at that white woman. Don't look at that white woman like that. Or, 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 or they'll drop in the comments, you know, Dr. Umar, you know, you might have to forgive me. Something like that. And, and, and it's garbage. And it's, and it's, and it, it, it is absolutely just, it, it, oh, man, I'm just, I can't stand it. I cannot stand it. It, it, it is awful. To preach hate against another person because of their race. It's, it's it's absolutely racist, and anybody who has anything to do with him is garbage. He's a garbage human being, and they are. And anybody who thinks he's right and follows him and anything like that, he is garbage. As they are garbage as well. I saw something on Twitter. That's something on Twitter. Something on TikTok as well that was interesting. Um. A woman was talking about that she wouldn't date outside her race because she wanted to keep her, her bloodline pure. And, and the guy and the guy was saying, you know, talking about Well, Jesus Christ. Think about if a white person said that. 
that they wouldn't date outside their race because they wanted to keep their bloodline pure. You would think that he was, you, know, you would think he's the worst person where you think he's a racist. But it, but when a black person says that, well, that's, that's fine. No, it's not fine. It's time to call this shit out, too. Black people, it's time to call this shit out. Call out Dr. Umar, call all the people who, because Dr. Umar has said something like that. As well. I remember seeing some, you know, I, I, I don't, I try to stay away from him as much as possible when it comes to social media. I don't want to see his stuff. I don't want to read his stuff. I don't want to think about him. The only reason why I, I pulled this up is I wanted to bring him in in this as well, because this, this whole episode is about the platforming these people who, who, um, who spread this, this hate, you know. And, and this ignorance, and he and he he is the one of the main culprits, and it is just, it is just god awful. It is garbage. But I, but I've gone across something, some things of his where he has said the same same thing like that to keep the, the you know bloodline pure. Fuck you. How about that? Get fucked in the ass with a red hot poker. How about that? Fuck you. It is it is, it is absolute trash to do this. Again, if you are you know if 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 if, if you are not attracted to other people outside of your race, you can't do anything about that, right? And maybe your preference is to date within your race. Uh I, I wish you wouldn't, but okay, that's your preference. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to um, get on you for that because I wouldn't want to get you to get on my preference. Which, by the way, I would speak here is to date outside of my race. So why I don't want you to get on me for my preferences, I don't. I'm not going to get on you for yours. But when you say shit like not dating outside of your race to keep your bloodline pure. Is, is, it is just ignorance at the highest level. And he says things like this, and he should not have the ability to do so. No, I, no, no, I, I don't think his stuff is going to be taken down or anything like that. He's going to be removed from Twitter by me reporting this tweet. But it is, uh, it is something that, again... I called on, you know, men to not, you know, to be evolved and to not, um, you know, listen to people like Kevin Samuels and Andrew Tate. I am now calling on black people to be evolved and and not listen to idiots like Umar Johnson. And, you know, and not listen to people like him. Come on now, we're better than this. So I will end this podcast with this. Freedom of speech is what this nation is built on. It is what we as Americans should love to do. The fact that you have the ability to speak about a whole bunch of subjects and about how you have the ability to speak to have tasteful discourse agree or disagree and I think that's the word right tasteful discourse about subjects but I also think now that we have come to the part where there needs to be the ability to realize that we now have social media and that social media as we now know is the ability to where you can put your thoughts out and have them seen by Hundreds of thousands of millions of people, right? And I think you can have 
like so much power in doing so that we need to realize that some of the things that are said well yes maybe they are under freedom of speech you know it also should not be the platform because freedom of speech realistically it is about the ability to you know speak your truth without government you know you know without government interference right yeah you know you should be if you want to say that America sucks that's what you do America shouldn't be able to be able to do that you know arrest you if you want to speak on you know the president or you know your you know or your 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 mayor governor you want to speak on what the you know, the, the country government is doing you, you know you hate the fact that you know you want them to be able to go to Ukraine and help the Ukraine or you don't want you have the ability to have that speech and the government can do about it that's the reason why free speech free speech was made and we we've, we've taken it and feel like that it can be other ones like to radio, right? Like I mentioned, Howard Stern at the beginning, at the beginning of this one, right? Free speech. Howard Stern should be able to go on the radio and talk about sex, you know, without without you know breaking the FCC rules or anything like that. Or anybody should be able to do that. You need to talk about whatever you want to without breaking the FCC. Use a language that would be, you know, again, tasteful discourse. Right? Using language that may not be considered to be tasteful. Have that freedom of speech to do so. But I don't know if you should have the ability to spew hate as a way of saying it's freedom of speech. I, you know, Andrew Tate, I date 18 and 19 year olds to imprint, you know, to imprint my, uh, my base and knowledge on them to, to, you know, Groom them. Mm, I don't know about that. Women who get raped have the bare responsibility. Mm, nah. White people are the devil. Mm, nah. Now, nah, fam, you are a low-value woman because you're 35 and single. Nah. Yeah. I don't think so. Not anymore. I am a proponent of free speech, but I think we have to cross the line. And we, have, and, and we need to start to deflat, de-platform people who use these platforms of social media in Andrew Tate's case, using his his minions to deep to spread the ignorance and hate that these people do, that they talk about, they the flat the platform. Them. Take them off the social media. If they, if they want to do it, if they want to create a website and do it, fine. They can do that. So if someone go out and find them. They don't need to be on YouTube. They don't need to be on Instagram. They don't need to be on Twitter. Twitter. They don't need to be on TikTok. They don't need to be on Facebook, Reddit, or any other social media. Spreading that stuff. I think it's time that we, you know, we, you know, stop it because free speech is important, but it's not that important. Not that important to where it can be dangerous. And cause, you know, young men to seek violence against women, to treat women badly. Or to start race wars where black people think all they, you know, think white, all white people do is bad. And, and to think that, well, I, I don't want to keep, I'm going to keep my bloodline pure. So I'm not going to dig somebody outside of my race. No, it's time for this to stop. It is. It just is. All right, that's going to be the end of this episode of The Word According to Me. This one has been my longest one. I had a lot to say. I read some articles, and 
I hope that y'all guys listening to this will, you know, will look at this and say that I am, you know, totally right. And I hope that you guys will, you know, when you see this stuff on social media, you will block it, report it, and just keep scrolling by it because it is absolutely horrifying. Especially if there are any young people listening to this. Please, I hope that you, you know, just let it go. All right, guys, that's going to be it for this episode. Uh, I will be back next month with another episode of The Word According to Me. And please make sure that wherever you are listening to this podcast, other than Sounder FM, um, you really listen to Sounder FM, um, you won't find it here. But I have another podcast called The Game According to Me, where I talk about sports. And we are in football season, so every Wednesday I will be doing a uh, weekly um, recap of what down just the past weekend in the college and pro football game and previewing what's going to happen this upcoming week. And there's going to be a new episode coming out on Wednesday, so make sure you again, you are there. Again, wherever, um, wherever you're listening to this other than Sound FM, check for The Game According to Me. Subscribe to that and listen to it. Thank you guys so much for listening to this podcast. As always, be good to each other. Be careful out there. And I am out.